Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194 and I appreciate you taking the time to visit and check out my video. And this is um, the uh, last part of my American Track Series for the Aston Martin um, Air American Track Pack Series. And we're here at Watkins Glen. I'm sure I'll be coming out with a, another setup for this car here. Um, but this is a good one to get us started. I mean, you can see how nasty it is. I, I've been... My, I probably put more time here at Watkins Glen than I did the other two tracks combined. I really have spent a lot of days um, here, hours and hours. But I want to get one out because, you know, it's really close. And uh, I run my personal best, so that was one of my goals. I run my personal best at the other two tracks, which, of course, I've already beat at Coda today um, with the Huracan. But um, still, at this time, it's my personal best here at Watkins Glen. But there's more there. But, you know, again, I'm really trying to find the balance between, you know, running, you know, performance, um, consistent performance, and those kinds of things. So that's what I'm still really trying to tweak and really trying to get. The one thing, the only thing I'm really not that happiest with is it wears the front tires harder than the rears. And it's not, it's more than I like. Um, and that worries me because then what happens is, as it burns the front tires off, then it'll start to understeer real bad. So, again, I'm trying to compensate for that and find a balance. But the bad thing about that is sometimes I might not make it handle so good at the start um, and things like that. So, again, it's trying to find that compromise, uh, but yet not lose so much performance that you're just out to lunch or you can't handle the car, like I said, with drivability. So, again, you know, of course, this video is always, you know, a little bit longer than my normal uh, real quick setups. Um, but, you know, I try to put some extra time in it and also kind of figure out where we want to go with it from here. But again, I'm sure I'll be coming out with another one for Watkins Glen for here, but I really want to get something out. So something that has a good base to it, but, you know, something that you guys or me, you know, all of us can build off of. Um, so we're going to make a, just a lap here. Um, and I'll just point a few things out. Again, you know, you want to come off of this last turn really good, which we'll go over that, and run it right out to the wall. This, this car does that really well. Of course, down here I'm getting near the 100. Again, it's just before the 100. And you want to do a late apex and get on the gas. See, I'm already full throttle right now. So I'm, I'm full throttle, and I'm, what, halfway through the turn, a little past that. And I'm already full throttle. So you want to get on the gas as soon as you can. You can run it out a little bit over the, over that paint. That's fine. From here, you're wide open. Mat it all the way to the bus stop. Now, I'm doing my pit stop thing, you know, where I've took half the fuel and all that. So that's why you'll see it's only got so much fuel in it. Um, so, again, I do that a lot of times. Um... To see which the car was running 45 teens, uh, 145 teens, 145 20 with 80 liters of fuel. So that gives you an idea of what it was running with, you know, heavier fuel load. But again, I wanted to test it with putting about 41, 42, it was about 42 liters and seeing what it would do because it does change the ride height a little bit and just kind of see how the car reacts. You see, it goes 164. I'm on the brakes now. Which I go all the way up to the 300, you know, right up to that. So let's back up again. We'll jump in the car. So you see, I'm right, right on the brakes now, and you see I'm right past the 300, right at the 300. is right there, so I'm just past it, going up to this. What you call it, little guard shack thing here, a little uh, for the track personnel. So again, um, excuse me too. I'm pretty tired. I've been at it for hours, <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a little pooped out. That's why I want to get something out. This, at least have some kind of because uh, I did run my personal best with it. So it's not like it's a bad setup. It's just something that you need to go off of from here. Um, but again, we're going to go through the lap more dissective because I want to show a few things. You know, you can run over this this bus stop pretty aggressive like right here so again i'm sometimes i got too aggressive and got the car a little crazy i think i did here that got the car a little bit uh 
uh, tank slapper, but you know it still can get through it. And see, then I'm I'm already you downshift after I go through that, and I come to this next curb, I downshift to third. See, I was all on the I was too much on the curb there, so that actually cost me time. And I got back into fourth. And of course, I use this grading right here, right up to it, um, as far as my next brake marker. This next series of corners are probably some of the hardest. I go right up to the 100. Now, I'm, I'm really still trying to work on this corner because to me, this is one of the hardest because it's up. A, you can see how it goes up a hill here, right? So it goes up a hill. And you have that little notch over here on the on the side that you run it out. But the car is just really tricky here. It's it's one of these corners where you you dived on the inside and you don't you just hitting the curb. You might want to touch it a little bit, but you don't want to get all over it. But you know you don't mind hitting it a little bit. But the thing is, you start giving it gas, and you almost you're not even steering to the right. You're almost straightening. You're almost steering to the left or straightening it out. And the car is just drifting over to the left. So it's really a, you get a good drive. You really got to be smooth, very small inputs. Um, I'll jump back in the car. Again, you can see I got the steering wheel cranked. I'm on the brakes. I'm turning. And I'll start backing off and almost going, you know, you're just, you're still turning, but you're dead. You're, uh, you're not turning much and you're kind of counter steering back and forth. So let's. Yeah, right along the curb. And you, you, I'm trying to run it out wide to straighten it so the car is actually almost going straight, but you're it's kind of counter steering and turning and going back and forth. So it's a it's a combination. And then here it's right between the 100 and the 200. And again, you don't mind going over that a little bit, but you don't want it, don't go over too much. And then there you you want to let's back up. And here, they like said you can go over this, but here you want to basically. I'll look for the curbing on the left. I'm looking at this here as my brake marker, because again, these things on the right can be long gone. Um, but I'm kind of looking at this as my brake marker, so I'm I'm braking like right around here. Again, I don't mind touching the curbing on this one, um, but again, this is another one that does the same thing. It'll start sliding out and. You, you want to run it right to the other curbing, you know, right there. So I'm right on it. So again, you don't mind doing that, but you got to be really careful. Since the update, I don't think it had it. Maybe somebody can correct me, but the car, the, this Aston Martin, did not seem like it had a turbo hit. But now it does. At least it's more pronounced. So now that's another thing. Um, you know, now going halfway through the corner and you're getting on the gas. It seems like the turbos come in, you know, they this the boost starts really coming on and the mid range, and now the car has like a turbo hit because the car now the car wants to jump sideways or it wants to go oversteer or things like that now. And you almost got to anticipate it because it, it's like right when you're coming off the corner, so it's really hard to diagnose because you might think, oh, the car's got a power oversteer coming off the corner, and it is, but it's mainly the motor coming in and it, it can't be consistent because you might be coming in at different speeds and one time it doesn't another time it doesn't so if it doesn't then all of a sudden the car is almost like it's neutral or an understeer but yet if you come in there like you should or whatever then all of a sudden it gives a little bit of a power oversteer and it actually can come off the corner just the way you want it to you want it might want you might need it to finish like that coming off the corner so it's just a really odd thing that it's it's put a Nexter X factor into the setup as far as having to tune with it because you have to uh, be aware of it and as you're driving too because you know when that turbos come in and a hit it's going to get the back end to swing out or get it to oversteer a little bit and that's where you saw me catching it a little bit back and forth that's what it is so again you come back here to the 100 again I, I don't even hit the brake I just lift the gas and go through it 
and sometimes lifting the gas will help it rotate. So you lift off the gas, the car will help, it'll want to rotate a little bit. And the same thing here. I use this curbing here as my judgment. You know, I don't go up to it. I mean, you can see I'm back a little bit, a car length so back. But that's what I use as my judgment for um, this last turn. And again, you know, it's critical to come through there. So let's try to connect the dots. You go right out to it. And here, like I said, you hit the curbing some, it's fine. Now you see I hit that curbing on the inside, that's okay. You see I barely I did touch the wall. I mean I was I was not gonna lift. I just barely touched it, but that was definitely my personal best there. And you see it wasn't a perfect lap. There was some small little errors here and there. Um, so and that was a 144.91. So first time I've I've gotten into the 44s, which I thought would be even better than that but again it's just it's it's tough now tuning it with that turbo hit which a car never had that before i don't ever remember the aston martin having a turbo hit but um you see i went through there better that time that's the way you should go through there but let's go over to setup and motac so again, and another thing, my temperatures, you see they're going crazy because I've been doing this so long, I've usually would have restarted by now, but you know, I just didn't want to, I just wanted to keep going and see how it would react with the heat. So it's definitely not cool. It's pretty hot. Um, but I got 24.1 left front, 25.1 left rear, 25.5 right front, and 26.1 right rear. The toe's negative 0.2. With the camber at negative 3.6 on the left front, negative 3.4 on the right front, with the caster at 15. And the toe on the rear is positive 0.15, with the camber at negative 3.2 on the left rear and negative 3 at the right rear. Um, here, I've tried so many different things, it's hard to even go through everything. But if the car has a little bit of mid corner understeer, you can take some of this negative toe out. Um, but I actually like it because I have a, it's just a balance of the package. I like it because I got a little bit more negative camber in it and I want it to be able to still turn in without having to crank the wheel halfway around. So, um, that's why I have that. I want to, I want to turn in as quick as I can. So it doesn't affect top speed as far as the speed down the straightaway. It's basically the same. Um, electronics. Four, three, and four. Now again, I've tried a lot of different things, but as you saw, I just ran my personal best with with four and four. And this really it helps with the turbo hit because if you put it to three and three, which I do have it, you can be fine with that. So if you think you can go to three and three, that's not a problem. But you might just have to drive the car more. Okay, you're going to have to maybe th feather the throttle more, or really, you know, just more steering inputs and things like that because i was doing both i was three and three or four and four but i went four and four because I, I still ran a good time and i was trying to be a little bit more drivable um driver friendly so again that's just but you can't adjust that to your liking fuel of course i had 81 liters you've seen how many tires i went through number one brake pads and again the front's wearing more than the rear i mean it's not huge huge but it's more than i like it to so again and this is light graining uh, mechanical got four on the anti roll bar brake bias is 60 which you can go down to 59 but just be aware of it's don't don't try to drive it in too hard because it will slide the rear and you want to do it after um actually it should be more like 61 starting out yeah so it should be more like 61 starting out and then 60 after that that's where it should be yeah uh, but i did 60 uh after my pit you know like uh, simulating a pit stop so it should be 61 starting out Steering is 14 all the way down. Springs are 155,000 on the front and 165,000 on the rear. Um, bump stop rate is 600 and a bump stop range of, uh, let's go three. And on the rear, the bump stop rate is 800 and the bump stop range is 10. So again, um, 
I can increase that a little bit to go over the bumps a little bit better. Let's go 14 just to help it out a little bit. Um, again, trying to go over that bump stop a little bit smoother. I did have stiffer springs on it, and it was just in which it actually felt pretty good. But over the bus stop, it was just too hard, it was too too bumpy over the bump stop, the bus stop, and it would end up uh, causing you not to be inconsistent. So again, I went down to one notch, one click all the way around, and it did, it, you know, trying to find a happy medium, and that was better. Uh, any roll bar is five, and the preload on the diff is 70. And I've tried all kinds of different, different any roll bar settings and diff settings. Um, you can do 60. If you like 60, it's not so bad. But again, I'm trying to get it to where the thing will stay off the uh, TC. And some, you know, I don't mind it sliding. If it's sliding and in a nice progressive slide coming off the turn, I don't mind that. I like that coming off these turns because you can keep your momentum up as long as it's not one wheel doing it. Because if you have one wheel spinning or one wheel sliding and whatever and the other one isn't, that's when you come off. That's what happens is when you hit the curbing or whatever, it's going to shoot it to the one side and you're going to wreck. So that's what I don't want. So again, um, I'm trying to get both tires to dig when I'm coming off the corner. So if it is sliding, both tires are still digging, uh, digging and you know, you can just go down the straightaway and we'll be in more control. Of course, the, the sway bar, I've, you know, I, I'm trying to do that to go down the hole, down the bowl there is, it's, it's really, you know, that long carousel turn, I guess you go down the hill, you know, I, I still am not really happy with that. And that's where I think a lot of my front tire wear is coming over the rear tires because I just cannot get the car to rotate through there fast, you know, free enough without it being just, you know, just crappy everywhere else, to say, just to put it bluntly. I mean, if you get it to rotate there really good, then the other corners you're tiptoeing and you're, you just can't go, you know, you, it's again, you're trying to find a balance to be good in all the corners, not great in one and just total crap and everywhere else. So, Again, that's where that comes in. Um, you can probably go from four, five, or six. If you think you can handle some more, you can go six, but it might be a little slighty. Um, but I just picked a happy medium there. Let's go over the shocks. On the front are 4189, and on the rear, they're 2178. So, again, um, that's what it came with Motec. I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've looked at it. Let's take a look at it again. And this was the after the last one. Um, I think this is my fast lap. Um, and again, it's not bad. It's it's pretty close. It's a little high on the rebound. So I did. I made one click adjustment on the rebound all the way around. Um, but other than that, it's you know right near 50 or right on 50 or you know it's right. It's all right there. So it's really close. I think it came in pretty good. Um, so I'm I'm happy with it. Then arrow, we got 54 in the front, 72 in the rear with a four wing and a three and a two in the brake ducts. Now, again, the brake ducts were barely good enough. They really weren't, and that's why I didn't want to make longer runs because I would have had to adjust the brake ducts accordingly. Now, if it was down to around 22, 24 degrees, um, it would be fine like that, and I could actually up the pressures in my tires. But with the three and two brake ducts, it's not enough. I mean, to make a longer run, you really need to go four and three and then uh, adjust your tires accordingly. So, again, this these brake ducts are more set for 22 to 24 degrees. Um, and, again, with the wing. The wing is – I've had it everywhere. I've had it from two all the way to six. So, I've adjusted different things, um, trying to, again, uh, adjust between the speed and – the corners and really four or five are your best bet. Um, it's the best compromise, but to be driver friendly, you can attack the corners. Um, now, if you don't care about handling and you could take the corners easier and you just, you don't really aren't, you rather have more speed, just go down one click on a wing and you're fine. Just leave everything alone. You don't have to touch nothing. You don't have to adjust anything. Just go down one more on the wing and go. But just keep in mind, 
going through the corners, you're probably going to have to break a little sooner. You're going to have to not carry as much corner speed, um, all those kinds of things. So again, you just have to keep things like that in mind. Same thing if you want to attack the corners more, you probably can go up to five and actually go up in the rear another click also. And you can probably attack the corners even a little harder. So again, it give you a couple different scenarios as far as the setup that you can change and to make it the way you want it, the way you like it. But all these are, are good. I'm just trying to find a happy medium to where, uh, you know, it can you can make it your own and it still works in multiple directions. So, again, it's good here. Um, and, of course, once you go down, like let's say you add 40, fuel, 40 liters, see, it goes up one here. So, one click in the rear, and it'll go up another click all the way down. So, if you went all the way down to the to you know five liters your it went up two clicks here and actually click up in the front so it goes up you know if you run it from full or well not full but from 80 something liters down to five it's two up it's one in the front and two in the rear so and that does make a difference in handling it, it makes us it does make a difference so again i did that's why i wanted to test it um it still felt fine and again i ran my personal best with it but again um just something to go off of um, again, if you want it to rotate a little more, I would probably suggest just go down one click in the wing. Um, but if it does, if it rotates too much for you or slides too much for you, I would just go up one in the wing and one in the right height in the rear. And that would kind of help compensate with the wing going up one. And you could, should be able to go through the corners um, a little bit better. So those are just my suggestions. I hope you enjoy it. Um, again, you know, I'm, I'm sure there'll be another one coming out for it, um, you know, some other time. I'm just like all my cars. I keep making improvements, keep doing other things, but this is definitely something to get you started with. And again, running my personal best, it's not that bad. So, um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope any feedback or comments, um, would be great. And again, thank you to Antonio for sponsoring this series. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I really um, I support whether it's a like, subscribing, comments, uh, PayPal, all those are support. And I just want to thank everybody for all those. And uh, I sure, again, don't forget to ring the bell. Please ring that bell so you get notified of all the, up to, you know, all the uh, videos that come out for all. You want to click on it and then hit all. So otherwise you might get notified for some and, and not for others. So I appreciate it, and uh, I sure hope you have some good racing out there, and uh, you come back and visit again really soon. Y'all take care. See ya.